Bill Browder William Felix Browder, born April 23, 1964, is an American-born British financier and political activist. He is the CEO and co-founder of Hermitage Capital Management, the investment advisor to the Hermitage Fund, which at one time was the largest foreign portfolio investor in Russia. The Hermitage Fund was founded in partnership with Republic National Bank, with $25 million in seed capital. The fund and associated accounts eventually grew to $4.05 billion of assets under management. In 1997, the Hermitage Fund was the best performing fund in the world, up 238%. The primary investment strategy of Browder was shareholder rights activism. Browder took on large Russian companies such as Gazprom, Sergitneftigaz Unified Energy Systems, and Sedanko. In retaliation, on November 13, 2005, Browder was refused entry to Russia, deported to the UK, and declared a threat to Russian national security. Eighteen months after Browder was deported on June 4, 2007, Hermitage Capital's offices in Moscow were raided by 25 officers of Russia's Interior Ministry. Twenty-five more officers raided the Moscow office of Browder's American law firm, Firestone Duncan, seizing the corporate registration documents for Hermitage's investment holding companies. Browder assigned Sergei Magnitsky, head of the tax practice at Firestone Duncan, to investigate the purpose of the raid. Magnitsky discovered that while those documents were in the custody of the police, they had been used to fraudulently re-register Hermitage holding companies to the name of an ex-convict. The re-registration of the Hermitage holding companies was an intermediate step before the perpetrators used those companies to apply for a fraudulent $230 million tax refund awarded on December 24, 2007. In response, in June and October 2008, in testimony to the Russian State Investigative Committee, Magnitsky testified against the perpetrators of the fraud, including the Interior Ministry officials, who conducted the raid on Hermitage's offices. Five weeks after his second testimony, on November 24, 2008, Sergei Magnitsky was arrested at his home. While he was in custody, Magnitsky was mistreated and began complaining of severe pain in his back in May 2009. He became increasingly ill over the next several months and died. Medical expert reports that have been carried out in the years since have concluded that for the remainder of his time in pre-trial detention, Magnitsky received inadequate medical care and may have even been given medication that aggravated his pancreatitis. The court judgment notes that domestic authorities unreasonably put his life in danger. After Magnitsky's death, Browder lobbied for Congress to pass the Magnitsky Act, a law to punish Russian human rights violators, which was signed into law in 2012 by President Barack Obama. In 2013, both Magnitsky and Browder were tried in absentia in Russia for tax fraud. Both men Magnitsky had died four years prior, were convicted and sentenced to imprisonment. Interpol rejected Russian requests to arrest Browder, saying the case was political. In 2014, the European Parliament voted for sanctions against 30 Russians believed complicit in the Magnitsky case. This was the first time it had taken such action. In July 2017, Browder testified to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee on Russia's alleged interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. On October 19, 2017, Canada enacted its own Magnitsky Act, which permits the freezing of assets and the suspension of visas when officials from Russia and other nations are found to be guilty of human rights violations. Canadian firms are prohibited from dealing with foreign nationals who have grossly violated human rights. Other countries, including Estonia, Lithuania, and the United Kingdom, have also enacted their own version of the Magnitsky Act. On October 21, 2017, the Russian government attempted to place Browder on Interpol's arrest list of criminal fugitives, which Interpol eventually rejected the fifth such request on October 26, 2017. After the initial request, Browder's visa waiver for the United States was automatically suspended. 
After a bipartisan protest by U.S. congressional leaders, his visa waiver was restored the following day. While visiting Spain in May 2018, Browder was arrested by Spanish authorities on a new Russian Interpol warrant and transferred to an undisclosed Spanish police station. He was released two hours later, after Interpol confirmed that this was a political case. Early Life and Education William Felix Browder was born in Princeton, New Jersey, and he grew up in Chicago, Illinois. He is the son of mathematician Felix Browder and the grandson of Earl Browder. He attended the University of Colorado Boulder before transferring to the University of Chicago, from which he graduated with a degree in economics. He earned an MBA from the Stanford Graduate School of Business in 1989 and entered the financial sector. Family Background Browder's paternal grandfather, Earl Browder, was born in Kansas in 1891. He was a radical and had lived in the Soviet Union for several years from 1927 and married Raisa Berkman, a Jewish-Russian woman, while living there. After his return to the United States in 1931, Earl Browder became the leader of the Communist Party USA from 1930 to 1945 and ran for U.S. President in 1936 and 1940. After World War Roman II, Browder lost favor with Moscow and was expelled from the U.S. Communist Party. Earl and his wife Raisa had three children, all sons, and all three became mathematicians who headed the mathematics departments of top American universities, including Bill Browder's father Felix Browder, who married Eva Tislovitz. Felix was a mathematics prodigy who had entered MIT at 16, acquired his bachelor's degree in two years, and by the age of 20 received a Ph.D. from Princeton. But during the McCarthy era, he could not find work because he was the son of the one-time head of the Communist Party USA. After a series of job rejections in the 1950s, he was championed by Eleanor Roosevelt, the former first lady, who was then chairman of the board of Brandeis University. She overrode the rest of the board who were afraid to hire him and he gained a position at Brandeis. Felix went on to chair the mathematics department at the University of Chicago, and in 1999, became the president of the American Mathematical Society. Felix Browder was renowned in the field of nonlinear functional analysis, a branch of mathematics with wide applications to such fields as physics, engineering, and finance. He was instrumental in establishing a science and technology center in conjunction with Princeton University and Bell Labs. In 1999, he was awarded the National Medal of Science by President Bill Clinton for his key role in the explosive growth of nonlinear functional analysis and its applications to partial differential equations in recent years. Bill Browder has one sibling, Tom Browder, who entered the University of Chicago at 15 and became a leading particle physicist. Bill Browder's son Joshua is the founder of Do Not Pay, a startup that helps to automate certain legal services. Career and Citizenship Browder started his career in the Eastern European practice of the Boston Consulting Group in London, then worked for Robert Maxwell's MCC conglomerate and after that managed the Russian proprietary investments desk at Salomon Brothers. In 1999, Browder received naturalization as a British citizen. Meanwhile, he relinquished his U.S. citizenship in 1998. He cited that he did so because of a legacy of bad feeling about the rule of law as a result of his family having been viciously persecuted by U.S. authorities in the 1950s, citing especially his communist grandfather, Earl Browder, who was imprisoned twice during the era of McCarthyism. Hermitage Capital Management Browder and Edmund Safra, 1932-1999, founded Hermitage Capital Management in 1996 for the purpose of investing initial seed capital of $25 million in Russia during the period. Denise Steinmetz was another of the original investors in Hermitage. Following the Russian financial crisis of 1998, Browder remained committed to Hermitage's original mission of investing in Russia, despite significant outflows from the fund. Hermitage became a prominent activist shareholder in the Russian gas giant Gazprom, 
the large oil company Sergitneft de Gaz, Raoyus, Esper Bank, Sedanko, Avisma, and Valzhenka. Browder exposed management corruption and corporate malfeasance in these partly state-owned companies. He has been quoted as saying, you had to become a shareholder activist if you didn't want everything stolen from you. In 1999, Avisma filed a RICO lawsuit against Browder and other Avisma investors including Kenneth Dart, alleging they illegally siphoned company assets into offshore accounts and then transferred the funds to U.S. accounts at Barclays. Browder and his co-defendants settled with Avisma in 2000. They sold their Avisma shares as part of the confidential settlement agreement. From 1995 to 2006, Hermitage Capital Management was one of the largest foreign investors in Russia, and Browder amassed millions through his management of the fund. In both 2006 and 2007, he earned an estimated £125.150 million. In March 2013, HSBC, a bank that serves as the trustee and manager of Hermitage Capital Management, announced that it would end the fund's operations in Russia. The decision was taken amid two legal cases against Browder, a libel court case in London and a trial in absentia for tax evasion in Moscow. In June 2018, HSBC reached a settlement with the Russian government to pay a £17 pounds million fine to Russian authorities for its part in alleged tax avoidance. Conflict with Russian government In 2005, after 10 years of business deals in Russia, Browder was blacklisted by the Russian government as a threat to national security and denied entry to the country. The Economist wrote that the Russian government blacklisted Browder because he interfered with the flow of money to corrupt bureaucrats and their businessmen accomplices. Other experts on the activities of Western investors in Russia in the 1990s were more sympathetic to the Russian government's assessment, citing Browder's earlier settlement agreement with Avisma, which seemed to indicate a long-standing habit of siphoning off funds to offshore accounts. He also had been found guilty of evading some $40 million in taxes by using fake deductions. Browder had earlier supported Russian President Vladimir Putin. As reported in 2008 by the New York Times, over the next two years, according to Browder, several of his associates and lawyers, as well as their relatives, became victims of crimes, including severe beatings and robberies during which documents were taken. In June 2007, dozens of police officers swooped down on the Moscow offices of Hermitage and its law firm confiscating documents and computers. When a member of the firm protested that the search was illegal, he was beaten by officers and hospitalized for two weeks, said the firm's head, Jamison R. Firestone. Hermitage became victim of what is known in Russia as corporate raiding, seizing companies and other assets with the aid of corrupt law enforcement officials and judges. Three hermitage holding companies were seized on what the company's lawyers insist were bogus charges. The raids in June 2007 allegedly enabled corrupt law enforcement officers to steal the corporate registration documents of three hermitage holding companies. They allegedly perpetrated a fraud claiming and receiving a rebate of $230 million in taxes paid by those companies to the Russian state in 2006. In November 2008, one of Hermitage's auditors, Sergei Magnitsky, was arrested. He was charged with two counts of aggravated tax evasion committed in conspiracy with Mr. Browder in respect of Downey Estep and Saturn Ecker SS 35. Magnitsky died on November 16, 2009 in prison, after 11 months in pretrial detention, nearly the limit allowed under the law. On August 27, 2019, the European Court for Human Rights, in judging a case brought against Russia by the Magnitsky family, ruled that Magnitsky was detained in conditions which amounted to inhuman and degrading treatment in breach of Article 3 of the Convention SS 193. This, combined with negligence, Lack of adequate medical care and ill treatment also amounted to a breach of the Convention SS 240. Magnitsky's family was awarded EUR 34,000.
As a result of the controversy related to his arrest and evidence of mistreatment and claimed abuse, his death aroused international coverage and outrage. Magnitsky's death was the catalyst for passage by the U.S. Congress of the Magnitsky Act, signed into law by President Barack Obama on December 14, 2012. The act directly targeted individuals involved in the Magnitsky affair by prohibiting their entrance to the United States and their use of its banking system. In February 2013, Russian officials announced that Browder and Magnitsky would both be tried for evading $16.08 million in taxes. In March 2013, Russian authorities announced that they would be investigating Hermitage's acquisition of Gazprom shares worth $70 million. The investigation was to focus on whether Browder violated any Russian laws when Hermitage used Russian companies registered in the region of Kalmykia. An investigation by the Council of Europe's Committee on Legal Affairs and human rights cleared Browder of the accusations of improprieties that surfaced at this time. Browder was also charged with trying to gain access to Gazprom's financial reports. Browder admitted having sought influence in Gazprom, but denied any wrongdoing. He said that purchasing Gazprom shares was an investment in the Russian economy, and the desire to influence the Gazprom management was driven by the need to expose a huge fraud going on at the company. However, at the time it was illegal for foreigners to buy Gazprom shares in Russia, and he did it through shell companies that hid his ownership. He also said that the scheme of using Russian registered subsidiaries entitled to tax advantages was practiced by other foreign investors at the time and was not illegal. He also said that he believed the trial was a response to the United States, passing the Magnitsky Act, which had blacklisted Russian officials involved in Magnitsky's death preventing them from entering the U.S. The Financial Times reported that this trial was the first in Russian history that included a dead defendant. Amnesty International described the trial as a whole new chapter in Russia's worsening human rights record and a sinister attempt to deflect attention from those who committed the crimes Magnitsky exposed. On July 11, 2013, Browder was convicted in absentia by a district criminal court in Moscow, on charges under Article 199 of the RF Criminal Code Tax Evasion by Organizations, and sentenced to nine years. Magnitsky, according to Browder, was posthumously convicted of fraud. In May 2013 and again in July 2013, Interpol rejected requests by Russia's Interior Ministry to put Browder on its search list and locate and arrest him, saying that Russia's case against him was predominantly political. In April 2014, the European Parliament unanimously passed a resolution to impose sanctions on more than 30 Russians complicit in the Magnitsky case, the first time in the Parliament's history that a vote was held to establish a public sanctions list. However, the vote was only advisory to the European Commission, which did not act on it. In December 2017, Browder was tried in absentia and convicted of tax evasion and deliberate bankruptcy by a Russian court, receiving a sentence of nine years of imprisonment. On May 30, 2018, Browder was arrested by Spanish police in Madrid on a Russian Interpol arrest warrant. He was freed soon after when the general secretary of Interpol warned the Spanish police not to follow the Russian arrest warrant. Browder had come to Spain to brief anti-mafia prosecutor José Grindo. After briefing him, Browder returned to the United Kingdom later that evening. In November 2018, Russian prosecutors announced new charges against Browder, accusing him of organizing a transnational criminal group and claimed he may have poisoned Sergei Magnitsky. 2017 Testimony to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee on July 27, 2017, Browder testified to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee on Russia's alleged interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election in regards to the Foreign Agents Registration Act FARA Fusion GPS. The latter is the opposition research firm based in Washington, D.C., that commissioned former M. Isaacs staffer Christopher Steele to collect information on Donald Trump's ties with Russia. The hearing was set up to examine the firm's separate work on a legal case involving the Magnitsky Act. 
He directly discussed the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Browder testified that President Putin is the biggest oligarch in Russia and the richest man in the world, building a fortune by threatening Russian oligarchs and getting a 50% cut of their profits. I estimate that he has accumulated $200 billion of ill-gotten gains from these types of operations over his 17 years in power. He keeps his money in the West, and all of his money in the West is potentially exposed to asset freezes and confiscation. Therefore, he has a significant and very personal interest in finding a way to get rid of the Magnitsky sanctions. Browder concluded his statement by reviewing the circumstances that led to U.S. passage of the Magnitsky Act. I hope that my story will help you understand the methods of Russian operatives in Washington and how they use U.S. enablers to achieve major foreign policy goals without disclosing those interests. I also hope that this story and others like it may lead to a change in the foreign enforcement regime in the future. Book about experiences in Russia. In February 2015, Browder published a book about his career, Red Notice, a true story of high finance, murder, and one man's fight for justice, focusing on his years spent in Russia and the Russian government's attacks on hermitage capital management. Browder's responses to Russian corruption and his support of the investigation into the death of his attorney Sergei Magnitsky are at the heart of the book. A film adaptation written by William Nicholson was reportedly in the works in 2015. Prevezin Civil Asset Forfeiture Case In 2013, the U.S. Attorney's Office for New York's Southern District filed a civil asset forfeiture case against Prevezin Holdings Limited, a real estate holding company belonging to Russian businessman Denis Katsev, based on information from Browder. Prevezin and the Department of Justice settled the case in May 2017 for $5.09 million. Pursuant to a subpoena, Browder gave deposition testimony in the case. Awards and Recognition Browder has been the recipient of dozens of awards and recognitions. Some of the most significant are listed below. In 2017, GQ magazine named Browder one of its Men of the Year for standing up to Vladimir Putin. In 2018, Browder was named the 67th most powerful person in the world by Worth magazine. The magazine noted, Browder has become one of the biggest thorns in Putin's side and appears to be a key reason Russia interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Browder's interview with Preet Bharara on the Stay Tuned with Preet podcast received the People's Choice Webby Award for Best Individual Podcast. In 2018, Browder received the Aspen Institute Henry Crown Leadership Award, a prize honoring an outstanding leader whose achievements reflect the high standards of honor, integrity, industry, and philanthropy. In October 2018, Browder received the Coalition for Integrity's Integrity Award for his courageous fight to expose state-sponsored corruption. The committee noted Browder's relentless fight against human rights abuses, corruption, and his work spearheading the Magnitsky Act. In September 2019, Browder received the Trinity College Dublin SMF Award for Outstanding Contributions to Finance. In 2019, Browder received the Lantos Human Rights Prize from the Lantos Foundation for his work as the driving force behind the Magnitsky sanctions, the most consequential enforcement mechanism of the modern human rights movement. Counterclaims Claims Andrei Nekrasov Documentary A documentary by Andrei Nekrasov, The Magnitsky Act Behind the Scenes 2016 According to the Daily Beast, absolves the Russian government of any responsibility for Magnitsky's death and claims that Browder was behind the $230 million tax rebate fraud. Several of the key figures interviewed in the movie have declared it mendacious. The Washington Post described it as part of a campaign to discredit Mr. Browder and the Magnitsky Act. The Washington Post commented in an editorial, The film is a piece of agitprop that mixes fact and fiction to blame Magnitsky for the fraud and absolve Russians of blame for his death. 
according to Browder's 2017 testimony to the United States Senate Judiciary Committee, Russian lawyer Natalia Veselnitskaya hired a former Wall Street Journal reporter, Chris Cooper of the Potomac Group, to organize its U.S. premiere. Over Browder's objections, the museum in Washington, D.C., held a screening in June 2016 hosted by Samer Hirsch. Dana Rohrabacher, our CA office, actively promoted the screening, sending out invitations from the Office of the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Europe, Eurasia and Emerging Threats, which Rohrabacher chairs. He was described by the Daily Beast as a long-standing Russia ally. Vladimir Putin's Statement in Helsinki on July 16, 2018, during a joint press conference with President Donald Trump in Helsinki, Finland, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that Browder had funneled $400 million to Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign, an effort that he claimed involved members of the U.S. intelligence community. The statement was made after Putin said he would allow special counsel Robert Mueller's team to come to Russia for their investigation as long as there was a reciprocal arrangement for Russian intelligence to investigate in the U.S. Putin said, for instance, we can bring up Mr. Browder in this particular case. Business associates of Mr. Browder have earned over $1.05 billion in Russia and never paid any taxes neither in Russia or the United States, and yet the money escaped the country. They were transferred to the United States. They sent a huge amount of money. $400 million as a contribution to the campaign of Hillary Clinton. Later, the Russian Prosecutor General's Office spokesman, well, that's their personal case. It might have been legal, the contribution itself, but the way the money was earned was illegal. So we have solid reason to believe that some U.S. intelligence officers accompanied and guided these transactions. So we have an interest in questioning them. The Washington Post and the New York Times rated Putin's claim about the funding false, noting that there is no evidence to substantiate it. PolitiFact gave it a pants-on-fire rating. Bill Browder, in his own article for Time, called the accusation so ludicrous and untrue that it falls into delusion. He maintains that Putin continues to make false allegations against him in response to Browder's involvement with the Magnitsky Act. Browder also says that he is a British citizen and no longer American, therefore Trump would be unable to respond to Putin's request. Their Spiegel Articles On November 22, 2019, German news magazine Der Spiegel published an article in which it claimed Browder accusations concerning the Magnitsky case do not withstand thorough examination. The English version appeared on November 26, 2019. After Browder filed a complaint against this article with chief editorship of Der Spiegel and the German Press Council, Der Spiegel published a further article, releasing its evidence and emphasizing its stance on the matter.